All right, so this is probably going to be the one and only work in progress video for this kit because uh, honestly, it shouldn't really take that long. So this is the Leo. I've got all the green parts here skewered up and ready for painting. Um, I'm not doing any modifications to the main body of the kit. However, I thought that the hands that came with this kit looked absolutely terrible. Uh, I just generally kind of think that most high-grade hands nowadays look pretty bad. Cause, which is a shame because we got really, really good hands with high-grade Universal Century kits back in like uh, 2008, 2009, 2010, around there. And ever since they came out with the builder's parts hands, uh, Bandai has started putting a lot less effort into the hands that actually come with the kits. Which, from a business standpoint, makes sense, but for us, it's kind of frustrating. So anyway, I took some build knuckle hands from Gun and Build Fighters, and the round finger build knuckle hands, and modified them to look like Leo hands. Uh, I took some epoxy putty and added these little ridges on the knuckle joints, and uh, where'd the backings go? There's a, oh yeah, I've got them skewered up and then added a little ridge of plot plate to the uh, backing of the hand, sanded that down so it's nice and angular. And uh, that's what I've done for the Leo hand. So now he's actually got some closed fists and some open hands. And I made a small mold and recasted them. So now I can use those for all of my Leos. So, I've got all that prep work out of the way, and now I'm ready to start painting.
Okay, so I just did a quick and simple paint job on this Leo. Uh, went with a uh, kind of a olive drab military green, a little bit darker than uh, the original colors of the kit. Um, the brown I kept pretty much the same brown. Used gunmetal and dark gunmetal for the uh, machine gun and the thrusters and stuff. Added a few decals, just Oz 26 on the shield, then a 26 on there. Uh, weathered the decals a bit and then did a wash over everything. So, the reason I didn't do any kind of shading, well I did shading on the gunmetal parts, but I didn't do any shading on the green or the brown because uh, next is a technique that I've wanted to try for a while but I've uh, just never gotten around to it and I've decided to do it on this kit. I'm going to be doing a winter whitewash. Now, I think when a lot of people uh, think of a winter color scheme, they think, oh, just paint the Gundam white or uh, give it a white and light gray camouflage or something. No, that's not what I'm going to do. I am going to be doing a whitewash. Now, back in the day, uh, tanks, like uh, during the spring and the summer, a green tank. Uh, is camouflaged perfectly well, but during the winter when everything's covered in snow, a green tank sticks out like a sore thumb. So what the soldiers would do would they uh, paint the tanks white. Now since the uh, snow's going to melt and the tanks have to be green again in spring, uh, they didn't want to scrub, scrub, scrub all that white paint off, so they just did a thin white wash of paint. and. Uh, most of the time that whitewash would end up wearing off towards the end of winter anyway so what you would get is this effect of the tank's been painted white but it's got a lot of that uh, green underpaint showing through where it's getting worn off and a lot of times you can see where they would uh, not paint around the emblems and insignias and country markings and stuff like that so that's what I'm gonna be doing with this Leo here. I'm going to be doing a whitewash. I'm going to do it with the uh, hairspray chipping technique. So I'll be spraying over the entire kit with a couple thin layers of hairspray, like the kind you actually use in your hair. And then I'll be going over that with a white acrylic paint and then using a uh, toothbrush and a paintbrush and toothpick and stuff to uh, chip away and add some worn areas to it so that green will show up from underneath. So I've gotten all the parts uh, that I want sprayed with white. I didn't uh, bother painting some of the joint parts. Uh, I, I may go back and spray like the knee joints and the elbow joints. Maybe a little bit on the rifle because I, I feel like they'll stand out too much if I don't put some white on them. So I may put like a thin coat of white on some of those. But anyway, here's the foot. and. I've got the hairspray between the paint, the original paint job and the white paint job. Now the white paint job is acrylic paint. I use some Vallejo. And the reason it needs to be acrylic, it needs to be a water-based paint. So now what we can do, actually I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. I've got some water on this paintbrush and all I have to do just go in and wet the edges and then 
see that? That water reactivates the acrylic paint. And that's going to let you chip away at the edges. And give that white paint drop a very, very worn look. Now this white paint hasn't been dry for about, I don't know, half an hour. So I'm pro I honestly probably should let this white dry for a little bit longer because it's removing it a little bit too easily. Because I am just barely using any pressure at all. And it's coming off with no problem. General rule of thumb, uh, as I understand it, is that the longer the outer acrylic paint job dries, the more resilient it will be to the chipping. So if you don't let it dry for very long, it'll come off really, really easily. But if you let it dry longer, the more you'll have to work to get it off. And I think it's just a matter of finding that happy medium of how easy you want that paint to come off. And I'm using this for the winter whitewash. A lot of people use the same technique for just doing regular paint chipping. Like they'll do the undercoat as a uh, rusty metal color and then do the paint job and then do this for their chipping. But I'm doing it for the whitewash, but it's practically the exact same technique. And when I sprayed the white on here, it covered up a good deal of the wash that I had done beforehand. So I'm going to go back with a different color wash, this time the uh, gray and just kind of doing a pin wash for the panel lines, not doing an all over wash this time because I've already got a lot of weathering effects layered on here so just anywhere where I notice panel lines need to be filled in I'm just dropping in some of this gray figure gray would be more appropriate on this white color scheme than brown or black. Alright, so now I'm doing a little bit of pigment work. Uh, I didn't show it, but I did take some white oil paint and just did a uh, wash on the feet and the ankle armor just to uh, give some fine detail snow effects and the nooks and crannies and stuff. And now I'm just taking this Tamiya uh, Weathering Master set with a little bit of paint thinner and just sort of dabbing that around the bottom of the feet just to give it a dusty snow caked effect. So usually when I do this I'm using a brown or a sand color and I'm doing dust and dirt effects but with this being a winter Leo I'm using white to make some snow dusted effects for the feet. I'll probably go and do the same thing around the ankle armor as well since it's down close to the ground. Got some snow right in here in this little ridge caked up around this part. Down on the bottom of this circular part of the uh, ankle joint. So doing that. I actually don't have any straight up uh, white pigment powder. I only have the uh, Weathering Master. I have light gray, but I'm afraid that light gray would be too gray. I mean, it might be alright, but I think for this one I'm just going to stick with this white Tamiya Weathering Master.
right, and after all the painting and washing and weathering, the 1 to 144 scale high grade Leo is finally complete for the most part. Uh, I know at the beginning of the video I said this was just going to be a one part work in progress, but like uh, I tend to do, I kind of let a small, quick project turn into something bigger. So the Leo actually is uh, pretty much done, 99.999% uh, .999 done. Uh, and I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, the winter whitewash uh, actually looks pretty good. I went back and sprayed a little bit of the uh, original green over the white because I wanted to give it kind of a rain washed look. In retrospect, I probably should have uh, done that uh, by just spraying less white, but uh, that was something I didn't think about at the time, so I kind of corrected that by going back and spraying a little bit of green on top of it and then going over that again with the brown wash. And I think it actually looks halfway decent. So it's not quite as pure white because I think once I got the white sprayed on and I did the chipping, it looked a little bit too white to me. So I went back and added a little bit more of the green and the brown wash and made it look a little bit dirtier and I think it looks better. It looks more accurate to the uh, whitewash tanks that I see whenever I do an image search for those kind of things. So I'm fairly happy with the way this has turned out. And uh, I did the white pigments with uh, to do the snow and ice effects on a few parts like around the feet and the knees, a little bit on the shoulder, all the upward facing surfaces. Uh, anywhere where snow and frost would accumulate I added some of that white pigment and I think it turned out uh, pretty good. So in terms of what I'm doing in addition to this, the kit looks really good and I felt like with all these snow and ice effects on him, it'd be a shame to just have the kit stand alone by itself. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I got one of these little round uh, pieces of wood and what I'm going to do is, um, oops, I'm just going to make a simple little snowy uh, display base for the Leo to stand on. I got a piece of floral foam here to make kind of a, a sloping, uh, not really a hill, but just like a little slope. And then I've got a uh, spool of wire here. I'm just going to make like a dead tree to stand up behind the Leo there. Nothing very uh, complicated or complex. As you can see, it's a very small display base just big enough for a 1 to 144 scale kit so I'm thinking just a tree and some well shoot just a tree and some snow on the ground and that's pretty much gonna be it so I'm actually gonna fit all that into part two because I've made this video go on long enough as it is so that about does it for this part the Leo is done and then part two I'll be making a little uh, miniature uh, display base diorama whatever you want to call it for him to stand on so with that I'll see you guys next time